Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fundamental Theorem. In this video, we're going to take a crack at a most fascinating problem. It's a problem I shared on the Instagram page of Sigma, the math society I founded in high school, and I thought I'd take this opportunity to explore it in more detail. So the problem goes as follows. It's the king's birthday and the land is abuzz with pomp and celebration. A thousand guests are invited to a grand party and each of the guests brings as a present an identical bottle of wine. But amongst these guests is one traitor who has poisoned the bottle that they present to the king. Now the poison they have used is colourless, odourless and tasteless. It doesn't affect the taste or appearance of the wine in any way. Furthermore, anybody who consumes it exhibits no symptoms whatsoever. They just simply drop dead 24 hours after consumption. So you are alerted of the situation and you are told that you have exactly 24 hours to determine which of the 1000 bottles is poisoned. And 10 of the king's most loyal subjects have volunteered to taste the bottles as per whatever algorithm you devise and they are even prepared to lay down their lives if necessary. So here's the question, how do you proceed? And how can you prove that your approach is valid? And how can you also prove that if you had maybe nine volunteers instead of 10, you couldn't possibly determine which bottle of wine has been poisoned? Well, at this point, I would like to give you guys a moment to pause and ponder, as it were. Well, if you need more time, please do pause the video and think about the problem. Now, there are many ways using which you can approach this problem. So first, I'll show you how I approached the problem when I first encountered it. And then I'll show you an approach that was discussed during a training session that I did for the Math Society I mentioned earlier. And while the former approach is pretty straightforward, the latter will prove extremely illuminating to examine. All right, the straightforward approach first. So here's what you do. You label each volunteer with a letter of the alphabet from A to J. Then you assign each bottle a unique code, for example, A, C, E, F, J, or something like that, that corresponds to the exact combination of volunteers that actually drank from it. This is the same thing as, say, making nobody taste the first bottle, volunteer A taste the second, volunteer B taste the third, and so on. And then you make volunteers A and B taste the twelfth bottle, B and C taste the thirteenth, C and D taste the fourteenth, and so on until you exhaust every possible pair of tasters. And then you move into groups of three so that, I don't know, maybe A, B, and C taste the, I, I think it would be the 57th bottle. But anyway, you keep repeating this process. And finally, the unique bottle tasted by the specific group of volunteers that dies is the one that's been poisoned. And the way you would prove that this approach actually works is using combinatorics. Every time you test a bottle, you pass over the 10 volunteers, as it were, picking tasters in groups of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This means that with maybe let's call it the 0th pass, you covered as many bottles as the number of ways to choose 0 people out of 10, that is 10 choose 0. Then on the next pass, you covered as many bottles as the number of ways to choose 1 person out of 10, that is 10 choose 1. And you continue on in this fashion such that during the kth pass, where k iterates from 0 to 10, you cover as many bottles as a number of ways to choose a unique group of k tasters out of the total of 10 volunteers, that is, 10 choose k. And remember, the order in which they taste the bottles doesn't matter because no matter whether they're the first to drink from the poison bottle or the last to drink from it, they very regrettably 
die anyway. And therefore, if you want to look at the total number of bottles you could possibly cover using this system, you simply add up all the Tenchu scale terms and we get that the total number of bottles that can be covered using this system is the summation as k goes from 0 to 10 of Tenchu scale. And now, what do you do with this summation? Well, if you know your identities, you'd know that this is simply 2 to the 10th, which is 1024. The identity I refer to is the identity that the summation as k goes from 0 to n of n choose k is always 2 to the n for all n. And if you want proof of that, you can check out my post on my Instagram account, The Fundamental Theorem, that demonstrates how you get that. There is another way as well though, and that's what I'll show you later on in this video when discussing the second approach to solving this problem. Anyway, the fact that the summation adds up to a number greater than 1000 proves that the approach will work because it is capable of uniquely identifying up to 1024 bottles. However, if we had only 9 volunteers, then we'd only be able to identify 2 to the 9 bottles, which is 512 bottles, which is not nearly enough to guarantee us a result with a thousand. So there we have it, a neat and clever little solution to the problem. If you are paying attention though, you will realize that the title of this video also references binary. Now, binary or the base 2 system of counting is a way of representing all numbers as sums of powers of 2. So whereas in normal base 10 numbers you write something like 1, 2, 3, which is the number 123, and the notation 1, 2, 3 simply means 1 times 10 squared plus 2 times 10 to the first power plus 3 times 10 to the 0th power. Well, in binary, you would write the same number as 1111011, which simply stands for 1 times 2 to the 6th power plus 1 times 2 to the 5th power plus 1 times 2 to the 4th power plus 1 times 2 to the 3rd power plus 0 times 2 to the 2nd power plus 1 times 2 to the 1st power plus 1 times 2 to the 0th power which in fact does add up to 123 if you actually do the math. So essentially, the difference between base 10 number system and binary is that in base 10, digits occupy places represented by powers of 10. So you'd have a 1's place, a 10's place, a 100's place, and so on. Whereas in binary, you'd have a 1's place, a 2's place, a 4's place, an 8's place, and so on by powers of 2 instead of powers of 10. So anyway, the obvious question now is, what does binary and all of this have to do with the problem at hand? Well, notice how binary is the only base number system where there are exactly two digits, 0 and 1. There cannot be any other digits because well, that would just be greater than 2, wouldn't it? Just like in the base 10 number system, you don't have any digits greater than 10, as it were. So, well, what does this mean? This means that the only values that can exist at a given place, it could be the 2's place, the 4's place, the 512's place, or whatever, but the only values that can exist at that place are 0 and 1. And because there are only two possibilities, we can say that each place can exist in exactly two states. Maybe you can call it occupied, which is represented by 1 and vacant, which is represented by 2. And this, as, it, as we call it, Boolean nature of the binary system, is why all computers and machines ultimately speak the language of binary. 1 stands for true and 0 stands for false, for example. Now back to the problem. Here's what we do. We consider each volunteer to be a particular place, as it were. That is, we consider each one to represent a certain power of 2. So we stood them all in a line, for example. Maybe the rightmost guy represents 2 to the 0th power, and the guy to, you know, to the left represents 2 to the 1st power, and so on until the leftmost guy who represents 2 to the 9th power. And then we number all the wine bottles from 0 to 999. And we label each bottle 
with the binary representation of their number. So the 123rd bottle, for example, would be labeled 00011111. And we keep the leading zeros, that is the first three zeros, because we have a total of 10 digits, that is 10 volunteers to account for. So maybe you can see where this is going. But well, just to make it more explicit, finally, what we do is we make those volunteers taste a certain bottle whose places, as it were, correspond to the occurrences of the digit one. Okay, so, so what does that mouthful of a sentence actually mean? Well, if you consider the 123rd bottle, for example, it is represented as 00011111011, which means that its one's place value is one. So it's tasted by the one's place volunteer. Its two's place value is also one, so it's tasted by the two's place volunteer. Its four's place value is zero, which means it is not tasted by the fourth place volunteer. Its eighth place value is one, so it's tasted by the eighth place volunteer, and so on. So it's also tasted by the 16th place volunteer, 32's place volunteer, 64's place volunteer, and that's it. It's not tasted by any of the other volunteers. And we essentially do this for every single bottle. And this is where it becomes crucial that there are only two digits in binary, because for every bottle, any given volunteer has either tasted it or not tasted it. That is, the digit corresponding to them is either zero or one. And right away, we see that because there are 10 places, there are a total of 1024 bottles that can be tasted. And this is easy enough to prove because you simply add up 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 plus 256 plus 512, which gives 1023. And then you add another 1 because you start counting bottles at bottle number 0, not at bottle number 1. And obviously, if you had one volunteer less, you'd be short by 512 bottles, meaning you couldn't possibly cover enough ground. Pretty neat, isn't it? So there is one last thing I'd like to mention before winding up. What I want to do is very briefly talk about why the sum of binomial coefficients is a power of 2. We saw how binary counting came up in this wine bottle problem, which makes it obvious why powers of 2 should be involved. And considering how the same problem can be solved through combinatorics as well, it's certainly clear that the connection between powers of 2 and summing up n choose k is not coincidental. But what does all of it really mean? Well, the key lies in what we do to the volunteers in each case. In binary, for any given bottle, a volunteer either tastes it or doesn't taste it. Similarly, in the combinatorial case, for any given bottle, a volunteer is either part of the group that tastes a certain bottle or isn't part of that group. And in both cases, there's this notion of a volunteer's either being or not being in some state. And that's the connection. When adding up combinations, what we do is we add up the number of ways to choose k entities out of n. Well, here's the thing, right? Out of the n entities, any given entity is either chosen or not chosen at any given time. There's, there's absolutely no other way it could be. So something like 10 choose three would mean that there are that many ways to choose three people out of 10. There are that many possible subsets of the total of 10 entities that consist of exactly three entities. And for each of those subsets, any given object out of the original 10 is either part of the subset or not part of the subset. Well, I'll leave you to work out the finer and more rigorous details of the proof, but this is really the fundamental connection between combinatorics and powers of two. Of course, this isn't the only way to prove it. There's more straightforward approaches as well, like I said. The technique I used in my Instagram post on the matter was to apply induction on Pascal's triangle which is also a very elegant approach that a good friend of mine once mentioned during a conversation.
I think that's all that we have time for today. But I'd really like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to The Fundamental Theorem. Follow me on Instagram as well, because I do most of my content over there. Do like and share this video and feel free to comment your views down below. See you next time.